Have you ever wondered how productions like American Experience explore archival material to get the images they use in their documentaries? This week, we're going to find out. Welcome to WGBH's The Rewind, where each week we explore the public media archives where our history is preserved, online and in the vault. Do you have a favorite historical photograph or photographer? Mine is Earthrise by astronaut William Anders. Let us know your answer in the comments or on Twitter with the hashtag WGBH Rewind. It's been 101 years since the ending of World War I with the signing of an armistice between the Allied forces and Germany on November 11th, which we now commemorate as Veterans Day. On this week's episode, we'll head into the archives to take a look at some production stills from American Experience's three-part series on The Great War. Let's take a look. I'm here today with Rebecca Framau, Digital Ingest Manager at WGBH. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, I'm so glad to be here. Awesome. So what have you brought for us today? Uh, so I'm here with these still image photos from that were used in the making of the very first American Experience production about the Great War. This one was actually the first time that they addressed the topic. And at the time, they didn't have access to digital photos, digital copies. So they would actually go to archives like the Library of Congress and the National Archives of the United States to get archival photos for research and to use in the production. The Library of Congress was initially set up as a reference library for people who worked in the government. But the National Archives and Records Administration is where anything that's created by the government goes. So all of the photographs that are shot on the battlefield, um, anything that's created by a senator or by a congressional aide, uh, every president at the end of their term of office delivers their papers to NARA. And everything that goes to NARA is part of the public record. So we can request these photos and we can use them without paying a copyright fee because they are part of our national history. It's a national wow. record. So in this kind of process, our were folks on the GBH side heading to the Library of Congress and sifting through? In a lot of cases, yeah, or calling up the library on the phone, uh -huh. um, or looking through catalogs that might be posted online to say, all right, this sounds like it's what we want. Could you send us a copy of that photo so that we can review it and see if it's what we need? In 1989, mm -hmm. I know when we get to a full documentary, we're often panning over images like these mm -hmm. or zooming. Um, what was the process like in the 80s for bringing these analog images into the format for a film? Uh, something very similar, panning and zooming, but you do it with generally, you know, with the physical uh, photo and you'd record it onto physical film because a lot of times oh. that's how American Experience was shooting. And because these are analog images, uh, you can really get as much richness as is possible to pull out, like with that analog film. Uh, when you digitize something like this, you can only digitize to the best standards of the time. So I brought this drive here, which is a drive that has a whole bunch of public domain photos that have been used by various WGBH productions that we keep so that other GBH productions can have that, you know, those digital photos to return to. But as you can see, this drive is kind of old. We can still actually connect it to a current computer using FireWire 800. It holds 60 gigabytes, which yeah. at the time was huge. Okay. Um, and we still use it for, you know, referencing those digitized still images. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing so much about this. I feel so much more informed about the world of documentaries and images. <laughs> Thank you for uh, having me down here to talk about it. It's cool to get a chance to show off our photo binders. We have one of these for almost all of the, uh, you know, the first 10 years of American Experience, Nova, Frontline, and they're all really cool to look through and just kind of see the images that went into the storytelling. Fantastic. You can watch The Great War and many other American Experience films on WGBH Passport. And as always, if you found this week's episode interesting, just head to openvault.wgbh.org. Let us know what you find in the comments or on Twitter using the hashtag WGBHRewind. Thanks as always for unwinding with the Rewind, and we'll see you next week in the archives. <laughs>